Amazon's being very secretive about their Starlink competitor project Kuiper, but they finally launched some satellites, so we're able to glean a few details about them, and it's pretty interesting. How does it differ from Starlink? They're being very secretive. They're talking about more than 3,000 satellites providing internet service. They're saying it's going to be lower cost than Starlink, but they're not telling us much. They're not telling us the actual prices. They're not telling us the actual speeds. On the launch, even, five minutes into the launch, they killed the live stream video so that we wouldn't get a good enough view of the satellites to know what was going on. But we did learn a bunch of things about the satellites from this launch. ULA said that they launched 34,000 pounds of payload into orbit. So when you take into account that that launcher must have weighed 2,000 pounds and there was a shell on the outside and you take that away, then you divide what's left by the 27 satellites, you realize that the satellites must have weighed about 1,200 pounds each, which is pretty much the same as what Starlink says their new V2 mini optimized satellites weigh. So they're pretty similar in size there. Now, one thing that's a little different that we did see from the brief video clip is that as the rocket went, they were launching one satellite at a time at the right mm -hmm. times to get them into slightly different orbits, which is not what Starlink does. Starlink, and they live stream the whole thing, they launch all 60 satellites off their rocket at the exact same time and they slowly separate in orbit. That's why if you watch the sky in the days after Starlink orbit, you'll see what appears to be this trail of stars going across the sky. And that'll be the group of 60 satellites that are still close to each other. So are they gonna catch up to Starlink? Well, they have a lot of catching up to do. I mean, Starlink has 6,000 satellites in orbit. And last week, Amazon's Project Kuiper had ULA use an Atlas V rocket to put their first 27 satellites in orbit. It went great, but they need thousands of more satellites. They're talking about launching over 3,200 over the next two years. And that's a lot of satellites and a lot of launches they need to do. So what do they need to do to compete? It has now been five years since Starlink started launching their satellites into orbit. They're a full five years behind. Starlink has a lot of consumers using it already. All the people most desperate for fast internet service have already bought Starlinks. So they have to do a lot better. Being 10% faster, being 20% faster, that's not going to do it. People will stick with the known Starlink service. That said, I don't think people feel vast brand loyalty to Starlink. But when in doubt, it works. It's a known thing. I think that if Kuiper comes out with a service that's half the price and twice as fast, they'll win. I mean, Amazon is a big company and they have some real advantages. They've got AWS. An awful lot of the web services that everyone uses today is already hosted in Amazon's data centers. And they're going to do things to tie these together to make it somehow a better deal or that you get better performance. You know they're going to. There are such synergies there. Another interesting detail is that the head of Project Kuiper at Amazon is Rajiv Badyal, who used to be SpaceX's head of satellites. He was a VP there designing the satellites for Starlink until Elon Musk fired him. Word is because Elon Musk wanted to go faster. And they have gone faster. They really did launch five years ahead of Amazon, which apparently has been thinking about satellite services since 2018. So give Starlink this. They are moving faster. So is this good news? Oh, this is great news for us. More choices. I know that Amazon's either going to have to put out a service that's much cheaper or much faster or both giving consumers more choices, more ways to get on the internet. A lot of our customers are using Starlink right now to get online in weird locations, on ships, on airplanes, on mountaintops, and they're not completely happy. It's not reliable enough. It works pretty darn well. It's much better than what they had before, but to have another choice and to have both, and you can use Speedify to bond the two connections together, I think they'll both be unreliable, but since they're separate systems, it'll be different times that the different ones go out and you'll put them together and get a much more solid, much more reliable mission critical internet connection by having two dishes to two different services. So I'm super excited. We've got more satellite tech discussions coming soon, so make sure you hit that subscribe button.